So today I've been playing around a little bit with the latest release of Rhino Linux. Rhino Linux is really cool because it's an Ubuntu based distribution, but it's not Ubuntu based as far as like a LTS kind of release. It is actually a rolling release version of Ubuntu, which again is rather interesting. One of the things about Rhino Linux is they have a lot of really cool uh, customization to their desktop. They have a, a XFCE based desktop that they call the Unicorn Desktop. They have a lot of cool tools like Packstall already installed. You can enable things like the Nala uh, package manager, the front end to app, you know, this really visually pleasing. Pleasing. They have a lot of cool stuff built into this distribution. You can see the screenshots. You know, it's a very beautiful Linux distribution. And of course, right here on their home page, Rhino Linux 2025.1 is out now. So they just had a release a few days ago. I've already downloaded the ISO and I've already installed this in a virtual machine. Now, I'm not going to run through the installation on camera because it's just the Calamaris installer. If you've seen the Calamaris installer, you know how it works. There's really nothing special with Rhino. Rhino Linux and their version of the Calamaris installer. Of course, it's customized. It's themed with their branding and everything. It actually looks really good, but there's no advanced customization options or anything like that. So I'm not going to cover that on camera. Again, I've already run through the installation. Let me show you Rhino Linux 2025.1 inside a virtual machine. So when you first log into Rhino Linux for the very first time, you're greeted with this little welcome program. It says hello and a bunch of different languages, but let's go ahead and click let's start. And this is where you do some extra setup that's not part of the actual installer, but after you install and log in for the first time, you can turn on various things. For example, package managers. You have the ability to turn on Flatpak, Nix, Snap, and App Image. For me, I'd probably just enable all of them, but if you're new to Linux and you're unsure about any of these, I would say definitely tick on, I would definitely tick on Flatpak, and snaps, especially since an Ubuntu based distribution, just go ahead and turn on flat packs and snaps. At some point, you probably will want an app image. I mean, I turned that on too. Uh, Nix, uh, Nix is, you know, something a little different. You may or may not necessarily need the Nix package manager, but it's there for you as well. And what's cool is when you turn on these various package managers, you have the option of installing some third-party tools to help you manage, for example, flat packs. Do you want to turn on the flat pack beta channel? Do you want to turn on flat seal? Do you want to go ahead and install that? Do you want to go ahead and install AM, which is a command line interface to interact with your app images? It's basically an app image manager, if you will. So if you want to turn those on, of course, you can just click all of that on as well. For me, I'm going to turn all of this off, but I will go ahead and leave flat pack, snap, and app image all turned on to see if I'm able to actually use them later. Containerization, of course, this is where you could, for example, turn on Docker or QEMU or VirtualBox. If you're going to use virtual machines, you probably want to turn these on. Uh, if you're not somebody that plays with virtual machines, then you won't need them. Now, since I'm already in a virtual machine and I won't be creating virtual machines in this virtual machine, I'm not going to turn on any of this. Then we have extra settings. Do you want to install Nala? That's ticked on by default. And I think that's a good decision, but you also have some other things you could go ahead and enable as well, such as Redshift, which adjusts your color temperature of your screen based on time of day. It's supposed to be better for your eyesight. For me, I'm going to leave that ticked off though. And let's go ahead and click next. And then it's asking for our authentication. So our sudo password. So let me enter my super secure password and hit enter. And you can see the changes are being applied. So right now it's installing Flatpak, it's installing SnapD, it's installing whatever dependencies it needs for me to be able to use app images on an Ubuntu based distribution. It's also going to install the Nala package manager as well. It looks like all of that installed just fine, but then we get another pop-up asking for the sudo password once again. And this time the sudo password is needed to actually remove the setup program because you're only going to need to run it once. So Let's go ahead and give it that and now it says reboot now now a reboot is going to be necessary especially since we installed a uh, flat pack and snaps i believe they require a reboot to actually work I, I could be wrong on that but it's always a good idea to reboot just in case and you can see we get this really nice flashy uh splash screen there that's just like a i think that's the plymouth program but the branding for rhino linux you know just everything is themed really nicely. This is a very professional, polished looking 
desktop Linux distribution. I, I, it's one of the cleanest that I've seen in recent months. So one of the new things with this particular release of Rhino Linux is now they have this Hello Rhino Linux program. So it's your standard welcome app that's got some links to various things such as the Rhino Linux website, their blog, their Discord chat server, and of course documentation. And you have the little slider at the bottom to automatically launch this every time you log in or turn it off. Uh, the first time you look at this stuff it's probably the last time you'll ever need this program really to launch on startup so I would just go ahead and tick that off and now you'll never see it again of course you can always search for this in the menu system just look for hello Rhino Linux is the name of the program so after you're done with the initial setup the first thing you're gonna notice about Rhino Linux is just what a beautiful distribution this is I love the wallpaper I love these icons I love the top bar it's got kind of like a global menu here it's a really polished clean look and it's amazing that this is an XFCE based desktop again they call this their unicorn desktop if you look at the left side dock here the first three icons are kind of your most important ones as far as navigating around and doing things you have your search bar you have your application grid and you have your desktop switcher and all three of these have key bindings the search bar which is a program called U launcher just type super s for search so super s gets you the launcher and you can search for desktop applications so just programs to run you can also search files and directories and you can also do a web search from U launcher if you want to so let's start with just searching for a file on your system so if I search for my home directory the tilde character for example this is going to list all the directories within my home directory plus files now if you go to a directory it's not going to do anything but if you click on a file it should open that file for you I've created this test file here and if I click on it from you launcher it opens this file which I titled test and you see the text is testing one two three it opens this with I guess their default uh, text editor I guess they're using VS Codium which is an open source uh, stripped down version of VS Code that strips away all the Microsoft telemetry and everything so that's kind of neat that they ship that out of the box and if I do super s again to bring up U launcher if I type G and then DistroTube which I did not spell DistroTube correctly. Let me do that again. G space DistroTube. So G space search query that searches Google for that particular query. And I've, there's plenty of things you could do. You could also do DuckDuckGo, for example. Uh, well, actually, it doesn't look like they have DuckDuckGo enabled. I believe you can enable that in U Launcher. I know it's something that is able to be done in U Launcher. I guess they just use Google by default, which is okay, but they do have Stack Overflow turned on, so you could do SO space and then some search query, or they also had Wikipedia turned on, so Wiki space and, you know, Linux would get us, I'm assuming, the Wikipedia article on Linux. Uh, Firefox is not our default browser. Set it as the default browser. I'm not going to turn that on. I'm assuming though Firefox, yeah, Firefox is meant to be the default browser on the system. They probably haven't had that hard coded as far as that variable set. This because not everybody is probably going to use Firefox. Some people are going to, you know, uninstall Firefox and install Chrome or Brave or Opera or whatever it is you want to use. Uh, for me, you know, Firefox is a fine browser. Now let's talk about the application grid now that is hot key to super a so super a should bring up your kind of your overview your dashboard where all your applications you could search through them you can see there's a lot of stuff actually installed here in rhino linux i'm not going to go over all of this stuff but you know it's got a full desktop suite of applications a lot of your standard xfce applications are here and then we have the desktop switcher which is set to super d now there's nothing to switch to. I mean, I've got two desktops right now. If we can add more as we open programs. Let's actually open a program. So let's open Thunar, our file manager. So now if I do super D, you know, I have the file manager on workspace one and then I have this empty workspace two. Now I could open something and put it on workspace two. Let's open the terminal. So 
We've well, got this terminal window open, Super D again. One cool thing I can do is I can just drag this window here from the main view over into Workspace 2, and there it is. Click on Workspace 2, and now I'm in Workspace 2, and because now I'm using both Workspace 1 and Workspace 2, Workspace 3 gets created for me. So now I have this empty third workspace that I could use if I want to. By the way, you can navigate the workspaces with the keyboard. I believe it's Control-Alt and the up and down arrows, because the workspaces are vertically uh, aligned. So control alt and then up arrow goes back to workspace one. Control alt and down arrow takes me to workspace two. Control alt down arrow again takes me to the empty workspace three. I'm gonna go back up to workspace two and kill the terminal and back up to workspace one and kill the file manager. Actually, I wanna bring the terminal back up. I wonder if they have the terminal hotkey to control alt T, which is a standard uh, Ubuntu uh, kind of key binding. They do. So control alt T brings up the terminal. Terminal. Let me make it full screen, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna zoom in if I can. They don't have the uh, hotkey for zooming in. What is that for this terminal? I go to terminal. Uh, how about edit view zoom in? Yeah, I guess I just have to manually do it. That's weird that I can't just. Usually it's Control Shift Plus, that's standard for all terminal emulators I've ever used, but I guess that is not the case here. But anyway, I'm zoomed in a little bit here. If I do a quick uname dash R, right now, as of this release, I haven't updated the system, but this shipped with 6.12.3 for the kernel. Now, obviously being rolling release, there'll probably be a new kernel I could update to, but I'm not gonna do that on camera. We mentioned that this comes with Paxstall installed. If you've never used Paxstall, again, it's like you're using an AUR helper, except of course the AUR is for Arch-based distros. Well, you kind of have an AUR-like repository for Debian and Ubuntu-based distros that this Paxstall program can use. And to search for things, you could do Paxstall dash capital S to search for, well, we know that they're installing VS Codium, for example. I could search for VS Codium. And there we go. There is the Paxstall uh, location for VS Codium. So it is available for us. If I wanted to install it, could I just do uh, Paxstall I for install VS Codium? Since there's no package name for that. Well, how about we do, could I tab complete? Yes, I could tab complete. So it's VS Codium dash. Okay, what's the uh, next? Uh, thing VS Codium dash bin or VS Codium dash deb. I want the binary package. Now it's probably already installed, so I don't actually want to take this, but I wanted to show you how Paxstall works as far as the commands. So uh, well, let me kill that because I really didn't want to install that. But typically, you're not going to have to interact with the Paxstall command itself because Rhino Linux has its own package manager called Rhino package. So it's actually Rhino dash PKG, but it's sim linked. So you don't have to type out the full name. So instead of Rhino dash PKG, it's just RPK for Rhino package. And this actually interacts with uh, all your package managers. So standard app package manager plus Paxstall. So all the AUR like packages as well. It also interacts with both Snapcraft. It also interacts with Flathub, I believe if it's turned on. So you're gonna get all your native packages plus the Paxstall packages, plus your Snap packages, plus your flat packs all in this one package manager, if you will. So if I do a RPK search, and let's just search for something. How about Zoom? It's a proprietary piece of software, but being proprietary won't matter because both Snap and Flatpak have it, and probably Packstall has it as well. And yeah, you can see, I have several different Zooms I could install. Actually, Zoom is available in app, well, Zoom Player. I don't know if that's exactly what I would want, but it's definitely available as a flat pack and as a snap. And you can see Zoom-Dib for Packstall too. So I could pick one of these to install. For example, if I wanted the snap package, it's a Zoom-Client. Let's do a RPK and then install Zoom-Client. Uh, searching for exactly that package name, zoom-client. It didn't find it in the flat packs or the pack stall, but it did find it as a snap. It's asking me to confirm that I really want that. And sure, but uh, I'm gonna decline. So really neat kind of wrapper around all of these different package managers. So RPK, cool program. That was RPK search to search for something, RPK install to install. It's RPK remove, name of package, to remove it. And of course, to update your entire system, 
RPK update, and I believe this should update all the package managers. So should update the native packages, the pack stall packages, as well as snaps and flat packs. Although snaps and flat packs should auto update themselves anyway, but you can see I do actually have an upgrade available. I have 168 packages. Again, this is a rolling release and it's been a few days since the ISO was released. Being rolling release, there's always gonna be updates. I'm gonna go ahead and decline taking that update on camera. Although it is, it looks like it is going to search through pack stall here. Let me control C just to exit out of that. And that's really all I wanted to do with Rhino Linux on camera with you guys. I just wanted to introduce this to you guys. I took a look at it about a year and a half, maybe two years ago. And, you know, I was really impressed with those early releases. But after uh, obviously a year and a half or so of development, uh, this latest snapshot of theirs is really nice, right? This is a really well done desktop Linux distribution. I think it's one of the best as far as just ease of use, ease of installing everything you want to install, ease of getting all your applications because of all the different package managers it can interact with. And yeah, it's just a good looking distribution as well. So for the folks that work on Rhino Linux, hey, this uh, latest snapshot version 2025.1, job well done. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. And of course, I'm talking about Matt, Steve, Armor, Dragon, Cap, Caveman, Darloff, Douglas, George, Lee, Methos, Erion, Paul, Peace, Arch, and Fedora, Riyadh, Teats for Lust, Red Prophet, Roland, War, Gentoo, and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this quick look at the the latest release of Rhino Linux would not have been possible. The show's also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work, please consider subscribing to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.